Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you all been waiting for. In today's video, we will make our crafting system. So, all jokes aside, let's get to work. The first thing that we need to do is create the recipes for all of our craftables. And to do so, we need to edit our S inventory structure, which contains all the necessary variables for our items. So, the first variable that we should use is can craft which will be a boolean to identify, of course, if this is a craftable item. The next one, I'm going to call this recipe. And this is going to contain uh, items necessary in order to craft this specific item. And this needs to be the S slots structure. And this needs to be an array if we want to use multiple items to create one specific one. And also the last variable that I will create is, um, let's call this out craft amount perhaps. Uh, so basically how many items we will uh, craft from yeah, how many we will get once we craft an item. And this is the single variable integer. That's going to be it for the S inventory structure. And now we need to actually uh, provide the information in our item database. As you can see, these rows right here are automatically created. I've also off camera added two more items to my system. And so let's see, the log is not going to be craftable, but the plank is going to be craftable. So I'm going to check true on this one and I'm going to add a element and let's break this, break this. And for the uh, row name, I'm going to use log and I'm going to use, uh, let's say one log to craft four planks. So that's how this is going to look. Now for the palette, let's see, let's create. So this is craftable recipe and let's make this a little bit different for now let's add multiple uh, items to this let's say we will need a log one log and one more element and let's say that we need perhaps plank and let's use four planks and one log to create one pallet so i'm gonna do some more craftables and uh, edit some more information and we shall continue once i'm done so i've made my crafting recipes to craft these items and now let's go to our ui folder and if we will have time we are going to create a custom crafting bench but for now i'm going to add the widgets to the inventory widget so now in our ui folder we can create a new widget and let's call this ui craftable and inside of this widget right here, just like in the previous videos, again, we are adding a border and making this into a parent. Then let's add a text field, which is going to represent um, how many items we are going to receive once we craft the item. So let's give this some color and let's create a binding for the text content. Here, what I want to do is uh, create a variable called amount integer instance editable and exposed on spawn. So let's drag that in and connect this to the return value. Then let's go back to the designer, select the border and I want to make a binding for the brush. So again, create a binding. Let's make the slate brush right here. Let's create a new variable for this call this item data, which is the S inventory structure type instance editable and exposed on spawn. So now we can get drag this in break this and we can connect the icon to the image so now this should be good enough for our craftable now let's try to display all the craftables that we have and to do so let's go to our ui inventory for now and i'm gonna create a scroll box for this one and i want to make this into the middle so let's see 900 by 100 position x minus 450 actually let's angle this to the middle so it's minus 450 50 and what i want to do is not have the items scroll downwards i want to go i want to make sure they go sideways so i'm going to change the scroll orientation to be horizontal and also i'm going to give this a name so let's call this craftable list let's make this into a variable now let's go to the graph and here on event construct what we can do is get data table row names. Let's select our data table and this is going to return all the entries it has. So from the row names we can do the loop which is going to check for 
all the rows. Then from the loop body we can get data table row. There we go. Connect the row name. Select our item database manually and this automatically recognizes which structure it's going to give. So let's break the S inventory structure. And let's do a if branch check on can craft to see if this specific item is actually craftable because it's not we don't want to display it. So if this is true then we can create create a widget and the widget of course is our UI craftable. So now we can provide our item data and we can provide the out craft amount. Uh, perhaps you are wondering why we are providing the amount from over here if we will be able to access it from over here. That is because we are going to create the craftable uh, widget uh, also for uh, preview of the items that are needed to craft the item and that's going to require us to have a different amount variable and not this one. So that's why we have two variables exposed in here because we're going to reuse this widget. Now we can drag in our craftables list we can add child and the child is this widget right here. So now let's check this out and I already know the sizing is not going to be good. It's going to be ugly. There we go. Like I said, they are all squeezed in together. So let's fix that the same way I fixed the drag and draggable icons by selecting the border and giving this some padding and in this case I'm gonna give like 38 because I think that was a good one once I was testing. There we go. So these are all our craftable items that can be crafted. Now let's make sure that once we hover over uh, we can see what items are necessary to craft these specific items and to do so what we want to do is create actually a new user interface called this UI craftable tool tip and again this is getting already a little bit boring and repetitive but we need a new border which is a parent but for this one we shall add a horizontal box inside of it then what I want to do is make this into a variable I'm not gonna change the name I think it should be good enough let's go to the graph and let's see so here we are going to need the item data which is the S inventory structure type instance editable and exposed on spawn. So here what we can do is drag this in, break this and this is gonna uh, give, give us the recipe so we can do a loop for each of the items that are required. Then from this one we can break the slot structure, then we can break the item structure, then we can get data table row connect it like so connect this one as well and then we shall create create a widget and the widget of course is our UI craftable like I said it's a reusable widget let's connect the outro and let's see now for the amount we need to use this amount right here from the recipe because this is the amount that's required to craft an item so now we can drag in our horizontal box and we can add a child to horizontal box there we go so i guess this should be working just fine now let's actually display this tooltip let's go to our ui craftable select the border scroll down till we find the behavior and on tooltip widget create a binding and we need to create a widget and the widget of course is our UI craftable tooltip which is the return value and also we need to provide the item data like so and now everything should be working just fine if we press play and hover over an item you can see that it requires one log to make four planks, one log, four planks to make a pallet, and so on and so on. Now the only thing that's left for us to do is so that on click something would actually happen. So to do that let's go to our UI craftable and since this is not a button there is no on click event but if you watch the previous video you already have a clue we can add new override function and do something on mouse button down but as of right now we are missing a few things 
and uh, one of those things what I want to create is the reference to our player character so that we don't have long uh, routes for our pens so what I'm gonna do on the uh, event construct I'm gonna cast to the third person character and you could actually do this in every single one of your widgets or simply transfer the uh, reference once you create the widget but I'm gonna do it right here so I'm gonna get the owning player pawn and I'm gonna uh, promote our character to a variable and I'm gonna call this player so now from this variable we can access all the functionality we have in our third person character and one more thing that we need actually that I forgot to make is we need to pass along the reference to the craftable item um, not only its data so for here we can pass along the item or we can pass along the row name which was a string I believe or a name we shall see so let's promote this to a variable and expose this on spawn now let's look for a place where we create this craftable which is in our UI inventory graph so here now it does not appear so we simply select a different uh, widget select the other one and here we have the row name and the row name is actually a name type so let's change this from a string to a name there we go and now we can pass along the row name for our specific item and uh, this is still a string so again select a different one and go back to this one now it gives us the name variable and we can now pass along the craftable name now in our UI craftable we can go to our on mouse button down event and start working on this first what we want to do is create some local variables that are going to be necessary for this function so first one that we need is the local fail which is a boolean so this is going to represent that we failed uh, to craft an item then we shall need the local amount which is an integer and ri of integers since there might be multiple amounts for multiple items and we also need the local index which is also ri index so now let's begin with the function let's drag in our item data let's break this and here we shall receive the recipe that is required to craft an item so we can do a loop for each let's do with a break um, then from the loop body what we want to do is drag in our player and we want to get the equipped backpack I don't want to use the items from the player slots because later on those are going to be simply just a placeholders for uh, equipment items and there it's not going to be like an actual inventory um, and so from here what we want to do is find a stack in our backpack to see if we actually have this specific item and then we can connect our RI element to this item uh, input right here then let's do a if branch check to see if we were successful to do so and if we fail to do so then we can set our local fail to be true and we can from this one run directly to the break now on true what we want to do is drag in the local amount and we want to add to this ri so let's add a value and for the amount we want to connect the amount from this array right here so let's break this slot structure connect the amount right here now we want to drag in the local index and add to this one as well and for the index reference we can use the one from the find stack like so and also one more thing that we want to check is let's drag this back a little bit and here we want to check if this amount right here is bigger or equal to the amount that is required so basically this one right here then what I want to do is make a and boolean check so from this success let's do and and let's connect this condition right here and this one now can go into the if branch check so we are checking whether we have this item and whether we have plenty of it the next thing what we can do is from the loop on complete we can do a if branch check to see if the local fail and this basically needs to be false and from this false what we can do next is drag in our player reference again get the equipped backpack and here what I want to do is try to add item connect this to the false and now for the item let's make this structure and here then we need to break this one as well since I am not passing along the whole item uh, I'm gonna select the item database manually and I'm gonna connect the row name you might uh, simply pass along the whole item if you like uh, but I did not do that in this case 
and for the amount we need to get from the item data we need the outcraft amount like so now then what we can do is from here we can do a if branch check to see if we were actually able to add something to our uh, backpack and if we were able to add something to our backpack then we can try removing the items and it should be successful since here we checked that we have plenty of those now let's drag in the local index or the amount it actually doesn't matter the order is not that important but we need to do a loop for each on true then from over here we need to get the other um, ri so in this case this was the index so let's get the amount and let's get a copy to the ri index right here because both of those indexes should be the same since they are getting set at the same point in time now the next thing what we want to do is again from the player backpack let's drag this in we want to remove amount at index connect this to the ri loop and then for the index we in this case want to use the ri element since we are looping through the indexes and for the amount we want to get this copy right like so and technically i believe we are done with this so now the last thing what we want to do is fill out the empty execution pins all across this function so let's look for those so let's see probably this one right here and actually ignore this one this should not be filled so make sure this one is set and let's set also this one and let's set this one there we go so only three of those forget about the loop bodies they should be left empty and now if we would compile this we will get an error on all of the return nodes and that is because this requires something but we can make the event reply manually like so connect this to both of these ones as well and now everything should be working just fine so let's test this out let's press play let's pick up a backpack press i there we go let's try to uh, to craft an item and we fail to do so since we don't have plenty of those so let's pick up some logs press i let's try to craft something and we were able to craft an item but again like always i'm forgetting one last function that is super necessary so on the loop complete right here what we need to do is from the player so actually let me drag another reference to this one we need to refresh our inventory widget there we go so now we are refreshing the widget and now everything should be working just perfect so now let's try to craft these so we have 12 logs click there we go 11 logs for planks now we can make a sword and we can craft all the other goodies that are necessary so that's going to be it for today's episode thank you guys for watching like always leave a like subscribe and leave me some comments and feedback on what other features you want me to add to this inventory system and i will get to those as soon as i can so see you guys in the next episode